Yo guys, what is up and welcome back to a brand new video here today and another episode of my F1 2019 modded career mode. Today we are here for the Monaco Grand Prix and this race needs no introduction. First of all guys, if you have missed the last race at Spain, go check it out. It will be linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. So go see what happened in the last episode before we jump into this one. And uh, you can tell by the thumbnail, we are going to be racing in cockpit view here today. For those of you who don't like it, it's only for this race. It's one race only. We may do it again later in the season, but for now, it's just this race, so don't get too upset. In terms of the weather forecast this weekend, no rain expected, and also worth noting upgrade-wise, only Toro Rosso have brought upgrades to this race. We're now going to jump, though, into qualifying, like I mentioned. Cockpit view only this weekend, a massive challenge, and something I've wanted to do for quite a while. We never got around to it last season, so I want to try and do it this year. Maybe a couple more times, maybe like two more races, possibly. Either way, we're going to see how we get on, and it was definitely a learning curve i had to get used to it again it took me a few laps in practice but eventually we got there in the end we just saw a glance of the uh, the williams there of course haven't brought an upgrade now for about a season and a half and there is nico hulkenberg in the alfa romeo and will this man be on pole max verstappen red bull have recently found a bit of form will he be the man to step back on top of the podium we'll see either way we're now going to jump the qualifying here for our first of many runs in this session and uh, this was run number one in which one we actually went for two time the lap so this was my first time lap it was quite cautious to be fair but still fast enough to be a decent banker Valtteri Bottas currently P1 as we crossed the line one tenth off his pace and we just kept on pushing basically we didn't slow down we went for another push lap and this second one was a bit faster we find a tenth and a half two tenths there through the end of sector two and purple through there as well as uh, Verstappen has now gone quickest for the Red Bull team we now make our way into the front couple of corners and there was definitely a bit of time to find through here as we throw the car through and we open up the DRS and we are going to improve by about two and a half to three tenths will it give us P1 yes it will and straight away we go to to the top of the timesheets purple sector two and sector three and we overtake Verstappen there for P1 setting a one minute 6.8 we then cut on to our second run and in this one we only went for one time lap and uh, we found a, a chunk of time in the first sector alone nearly two tenths there going down to the lows slash Fairmont hairpin however you want to call it we then cut on towards the end of the lap now and we have lost a little bit of time through the rest of sector two but we're still purple and we're looking pretty damn good here to improve our lap as we find a bit more time through the swimming pool chicane and now into the final couple of corners finding even more lap time here throwing the car in and finding another half a tenth or so and we are going to cross the line and improve by about three tenths of a second once again and um I thought that lap was going to be good enough, but then the final run happened and it was one of my best laps of my career. So let's enjoy it. It wasn't absolutely perfect, but still a really, really quick lap. So here we go. A lap around Monaco in cockpit view. And here we go up to the line and we cross the finish line and we improve by over a tenth of a second and the purple sector two purple sector three the only mistake really was turn one that was a little bit poor on my end and um, there's a bit of a time loss as well through the swimming pool chicane but generally speaking it was a very good lap and i was very happy with it here is your grid though for the race and we do secure a pole position our first one of the season carlos signs alongside us in the mclaren great quality from him max verstappen only in third and that's the best he could do with sergio perez p4 
four in the second of the racing point. So a good day in the office for us as we get both cars in the top four. Charles Leclerc is P5 for Haas with George Russell alongside him in the second Red Bull for P6. Kevin Magnussen all the way up in P7 for a Renault. Fantastic qualifying from him. And Danny Kafia only in eighth place in the first of the Ferraris. And uh, the red team, the Pricing Horses, having a very disappointing qualifying. And um, they're going to have to really try and pull something out of the bag in the race here today. Alex Albon is P9 in the second Haas ahead of Lando Norris. Great quality from Lando as well in the worst car on the grid. The Williams there up in 10th place ahead of Kimi Raikkonen and Valtteri Bottas who does have a 10th place grid penalty. He was originally P2 but he has to go way back down the grid down to row number 6. So the McLaren is looking pretty strong around here in terms of pace. We then move on to Antonio Giovinazzi up in 13th. Great quality from him as well in the second Renault. And then we've got both of the Mercedes. Sebastian Vettel once again at qualifying Pierre Gasly. And then we have Lewis Hamilton who originally qualified P6. He's down to 16th place. So again, a really bad day so far for Ferrari. And they've got a, a massive task on their hands to try and turn this around in the race. We then have Ricardo 17th ahead of Lance Stroll. Grosjean who for once is in the last place because that belongs to Nico Hülkenberg who has a 10th place grid penalty of his own. And he starts from the back of the grid in the Alpha. But that is your grid, guys, for the race here today at Monaco. We start from P1, our first pole of the season. Can we make it two wins on the spin? Let's find out and let's see how the race gets on here in Monaco. This is it then. Here it is, the Monaco Grand Prix, the jewel in the crown of the F1 calendar and uh, the race by the Principality, one of the most legendary races on the Formula 1 Canada, of course, we won't be seeing it in real life in 2020. And it has to be said, it's not the most spectacular race, but qualifying is very special. We just saw what happened a moment ago. And the target of this race is to try and pick up the full 25 points here today, starting from first place, of course. In terms of the race strategy, we're going to start on the soft tires that we qualified on, of course, and then we're going to move on to mediums. Very, very simple one stop strategy around here. Fuel wise, we're going to run 0.2 laps extra, very little just for the start, really. And then we're going to kind of manage our fuel lap by lap hopefully we can hold on to the lead and we can control the race if someone does get by you know probably signs because he's alongside us um it could be tricky to get back past and maybe strategy will come into it but for now i'm planning on hopefully staying in front the entire race so uh, hopefully that can work out for us without further ado though let's jump into things here at monaco and let's try and win this damn race right here we go then trying to get the revs into the optimal range as the lights are on and it's lights out and away we go for the monaco grand prix Good start from us, just putting our car in the middle of the racetrack, just trying to avoid cars behind making our way through. We do brush the wall there on the exit, but crucially, we don't get damaged, I don't think, as we hold on crucially to our lead. Exactly what we wanted, and we've avoided really the main first hurdle. Other things that could happen in this race, of course, VSCs and safety cars, those could be a curveball here today, but fingers crossed there won't be any or many of those. And we can just have a nice, peaceful and straightforward 39 laps out front. But you never know on this game, things always happen. So let's see. Sainz has held on to P2, Verstappen P3. I'm running full power at the moment on the engine mode. As I look to try and establish an early gap over the guys behind, we're going to try and stretch the pack a little bit. So I'm going to get my head down and push. And I'll get back when something happens. So lap 2 draws to a close. The RS will now be enabled on lap 3. Pace is good. We're pulling away from Sainz, which is good. Just trying to keep it nice and tidy, nice and consistent. And I'm using full power on the ERS on the straights. So it's going well at the moment. Science does catch up through sector one. That's the AI strongest sector. But then we pull away over the rest of the lap. So, so far so good. Let's try and keep it ticking over as it's been a pretty good start so far. Nice and clean and no issues behind us. Another purple lap, that's good pace. To be fair, you know, around here on the soft tires, the fastest laps may get set at the start of the race. So. Um, this pace is important in terms of potentially picking up an extra point for the fastest lap. Of course, we will try on the mediums later on, but from my experience around here, the soft tire normally secures the lap. Another purple lap, that's three in a row now, pace is good. But well, that is kind of the best I can do now, I can feel the tire starting to let go a little bit in certain areas already now. The rears can't keep up as well as they once did. Starting to struggle now on tires, but luckily we have a pretty good gap to signs. So even if he undercuts, He's going to be quite far behind, so um, that's good news for us. Trying to keep it at that three second range, give or take. Pace is gone now, tyres are really struggling for grip. Rear is only on 40%, but it feels a lot worse than that. We're scheduled to pit next lap, lap 12, so uh, two more to go. Gap is 2.5, so Sainz has actually pulled some time back, to be fair to him. Okay, that was a better lap. We're going to probably pit this lap now. 
push now or we're boxing this lap. And we're not going to take any risks. We'll box this lap player safe and also that way avoid any undercuts from cars behind. Struggling for grip now, but here we go. Into sector three. Pit now. Pit now. Last time on these tyres, just trying to nurse these through as the grip is pretty thin. Like I said, the tyre wear is not that bad, but I've just got no real pace on these, but we're going to pit. And there we go. Right. Once the medium tyre sign stays out, Verstappen does pit. So we've protected the undercut. All we need now is a nice bit of clean track and a good outlap, and we'll be okay. Exit now. You'll be racing as you leave the pits. Release, release. Looks like Verstappen got held up an absolute treat. We are going to rejoin in traffic, which could make things interesting. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. We're going to be stuck behind these guys, it looks like, on the outlap. So we better hope Carlos pits this lap because we could be in trouble here. These guys are very slow. I'm losing a lot of time. This isn't good. I need to try and find a way past. Perez pits. Is in the pits. Guessing signs pits as well. Yes, he does. Let's see what we can do here as we go through La Rascas into the final corner. Down the inside. We do get a move on Kimmy. Bit of contact as he tries to hang on, but luckily for us, crucially. We crucially hang on to third place and uh, we get ahead of signs. So we have pulled that off, which is good. Wing is still intact. I thought we may have got some damage in the process, but we avoided it. For some reason, I downshifted, but the car didn't respond to the downshifts into turn one. So I almost stacked it in the wall by holding it in fourth gear. Luckily for us, that wasn't the case. We managed to hold on. So now let's try and get past some of these guys. That Williams in front of us on the hard tires. That explains the lack of pace. I believe it's Lando. I can never get the traction out of here compared to the AI. It's funny because when I'm in front, I always pull away. But when I'm behind, I can't keep up. As Albon goes for a move here, this could get interesting. We're just going to back off. It's a great overtake though from Albon on the outside. I had a look into to back, but we had to back off. Let's see if we can follow through now and make a move on this Williams as well. Might have to be the exact same move as last lap or not. Had a look, but didn't quite get the traction down. Damn it, can't get the acceleration. Lando's not pitting for a while, so we're going to have to try and find a way past here somewhere. Oh, that's not too bad. We may have a chance here. No DRS, but I think we're close enough. Down the inside of the Nouveau Chicane. And there we go, we get the move on Lando. Good stuff. Right, we're through. Now we can go hunt down Alex Albon, who's in front of us on the medium tyres. Charles Leclerc, new fastest lap, so there goes our extra point. We may try and go for that later on, once we clear the traffic and we get clean track. We'll try and use these tyres to set a new PB. Okay, we're now all over the back of Albon here, purple sector two. Good pace from us, using these fresh medium tyres to good effect. Let's see if we can look for a move on the Haas driver here. He won't have DRS, so if I can nail the exit, which I do, we can maybe go through. Here we go. Down the inside of turn one. Nice move. And there we go. We take back first place in the Monaco Grand Prix. Nice, clean, effective overtakes. Raikkonen right, one was a bit scruffy, I will admit, but it had to be done. We now have got clean air. We can extend our gap over everyone behind us, so let's do that. And let's also try and pick up a new fastest lap on the next lap. So we'll charge everything up. New PB from Charles Leclerc, 109.0. Let's see what we can do on this lap as we're now full push, full power. Right out the final corner, that should do the trick. And there we go, we're out of fuel, but we do set a new PB into the one minute eight. Let's see if anyone wants to beat that lap. It probably will get beaten, but it's a good benchmark. Okay, Albon pits, and I think Leclerc has done his pit stops, so I believe Somehow, Charles Leclerc has leapfrogged everybody and he's got himself into a net P2 unless maybe he's on a two-stop strategy and he pit early, had no traffic and managed to undercut. We'll see what happens, but for now, it looks like Leclerc could be P2 in this race. Okay, Valtteri Bottas out of the session. Drop your speed 
our delta is too low and we risk a penalty. Slow your pace immediately. So that's quite interesting. This is what I said at the start, these kind of things could disrupt our race. Luckily for us, it has arrived at a good time. Most of the cars have done their stops already, so that's good. Just going to wait for the restart now. Apparently you can floor it once it says VSC ending, so we're going to wait for that. And then we'll absolutely go for it, we'll just punch it. There we go. You can just go full pace. Even if you go into the red, it doesn't matter, you can still floor it apparently. It's something I found out. In that particular case, we didn't get to time it properly due to um, the, the, the nature of the corners. In the slow corners, you lose a lot of time to the VSE. Um, but yeah, you, you can punch it and go flat out and even drive it into the red once VSC is ending. Once you get that message, you can absolutely go flat out either way. There is Valtteri as uh, he pulls up Nico Rosberg Avenue. Where well, we're going to get on with this race now and uh, try and secure this win. So head down and uh, max pace. Let's push. That VSC has just ruined my rhythm a bit. Leclerc now inside three seconds. He's actually closed up about 1.5 in that entire period. Also, Sainz has gained as well. So I've kind of lost a bit of a rhythm. So I've got to try and find my groove again on these tyres. Not sure where to find it, but just lost a bit of an edge. So I've got to try and cut the pace. At the minute, the gap is staying at 2.9. Seems like Leclerc and Sainz have lost their pace a little bit now, which is good. Things have evened out. I am running flat out now. I don't really have much more pace in the car. So we're kind of hoping that this will do the job. As we have now entered the final 10 laps, give or take. Just got to try and keep it together. Make no mistakes and keep it nice and tidy. Hopefully no more safety cars or VSCs and we can go to the finish. Okay, gap down at 2.3. Leclerc's picked up his pace. I'm starting to struggle my tyres now, like the last stint. The rears are starting to let go. And the car feels very floaty, very light. And I don't really have the confidence to attack corners anymore. Which is a bad thing around Monaco, you know, you want to be able to throw the car in and have full confidence the rear end's going to stick. But I don't have that anymore. Mostly with the gap is through the second sector split. First sector that they are always very strong through there. My strongest sector is the final one. It's 2.3 still. Looks like Leclerc could be closing in on us boys. Let's see what my final sector is as we uh, navigate the final couple of corners. Just trying to hang on to my tyres now. I've got the diff on 50 to try and save, you know, rear tyre wear, but that was not a good lap. Struggling, 2.3. Wow, Leclerc is really pushing. And so is Sainz, to be fair to him. That was a better one. Gap now, two seconds. It was 1.8 through the first sector. So we managed to respond a little bit in the final two sectors, which is good. But it's not over yet. I've got to try and find a way to keep my tyres alive, which, to be fair, I'm doing a bit better now. But still a long way to go. Okay, we've responded. Picked up the pace a little bit. And the gap has now gone up a little bit to 2.1. So we're just keeping Leclerc at bay now. Just got to keep this up for a couple more laps and we'll be there. Oh, yellow flag. Something's happened. It's a Ferrari. I think he may have clipped the inside wall and hit the wall on the left. But that Ferrari has wing damage, whoever it may be. Hopefully we don't catch it. Then we'll be okay. I don't think we'll lose too much time behind that Ferrari. Yeah, he's going to probably box to be fair. And get out of the way. Meanwhile, Leclerc has had a stonker. That Ferrari is staying out, though, as we really are struggling on the rears now, though. Okay, two laps to go. Hopefully the Ferrari doesn't get in our way. We've been in control this whole race, but I'm now struggling on my tyres. And we're now catching up to this Ferrari that has a blue flag. I think it's Lewis, who's had a disastrous weekend, to be fair. Somehow we don't have the RS, but that's okay. Leclerc isn't close enough to make a move. Last up of the race. No mistakes now. Let's just bring this home. Here we go through the Lowe's hairpin, or the Fairmont hairpin. Let's see if uh, Lewis will get out of the way on the right-hand side. Yes, he does. We almost collected him there. He got on the brakes when he got out of the way, which was quite interesting. But we should be okay now as we make our way through the new Belgian chicane. No more dramas, I don't think. Just got to try and coast it to the finish. Take it a little bit easier through to back than I normally would. And you know, a little bit easier through the swimming pool section. There's no way Leclerc will pass us now. Just got to get a nice clean exit out the final corner. That's all we need. And we will be fine. Here we go. 39 laps of Monaco. Done and dusted through the final corner. And there we go. Job done. Two in a row. And we win the Monaco Grand Prix. Get in there. Yes. Superb driving. That's the race win. A victory for Racing Point, and the team will certainly be celebrating tonight.
Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but the truth is they simply had the best speed package on the day, and a driver who knows how to take advantage of that. It doesn't matter how much time you spend poring over the stats and planning strategies if you can't keep the pace, and our winner today showed they could do both. Racing Point's performance today has shown that they can be competitive with the veterans of the sport. They're making their way out to the podium now as we speak, and the reaction from the crowd must be incredibly uplifting for them. Well, there we have it then, guys. It's a marvellous result here today at Monaco. We also pick up the fastest lap, so we do succeed and get 26 points, which is the absolute maximum you can have. We beat Leclerc and Sainz, and funnily enough, those two guys, those two young men, of course, are now confirmed to be Ferrari drivers for 2021. So it's funny how that works out. Verstappen, P4 in the Red Bull, ahead of Sergio Perez, who finishes P5 in the end. Russell, sixth. Magnussen down in P7, Kafiat only P8, the championship leader taking a big hit here today. Albon P9 and Lando Norris scoring a point for the struggling Williams team. He manages to beat Pierre Gasly to the line along with Hulkenberg, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Stroll, Ricardo, Grosjean, Vettel and Hamilton who we just lapped a lap down. A disappointing race for the multiple time world champion. Valtteri Bottas DNFs here today and in terms of what that means for the driver standings it's absolutely massive. We overtake Lewis for second place and we are only nine points behind Danny Kafiat heading into the next race at Canada. Charlotte Leclerc and Sainz move up thanks to their podiums and uh, Bottas and Vettel drop down. Magnussen into the top half of the table overtaking Kimi and in terms of the constructors we are 42 points behind Ferrari. It's a good day for us because with the uh, first place for me and a P5 for Perez and Ferrari only scoring a few points with Kafiat down in 8th we are going to take a massive chunk out of their points lead here today and we close the gap massively as Haas overtake Mercedes for P5. But guys that is going to be it from this episode of Career Mode here today at Monaco. If you guys enjoyed the race and enjoyed the video, drop a big fat like on it and also for the attempt with Cockpit View. Also, if you could subscribe for daily Formula 1 content, guys, also MotoGP content and all the latest breaking news on F1 2020, then be subscribed for that, guys, and click the bell icon to be notified when that content does go live. But finally, check out the two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But that is it from me here today at the Principality, and I'll see you all next time, guys, for the next episode of my Career Mode. But until then, it's goodbye from me.